In this video, you will learn about the Security Assertion Markup Language, better known as SAML. SAML is an open standard for browser-based single sign-on, and it can do both authentication and authorization. Note, however, that it does not work for non-browser-based application, such as SMB file servers, SSH, FTP, or any other non-HTTP protocols. Typically, it extends Active Directory LDAP service, which is a database of users and computers that has been extensively adopted by enterprises over the past few decades and which provides single sign-on of Microsoft Office and file server applications. SAML is a widely adopted enterprise solution for single sign-on for business-to-business, business-to-employee, and SaaS applications. It can be enabled as a basic service of AD, known as Active Directory Federation Services, and it's a native function of Azure Directory Services. Similarly, it's a basic function of the CA SiteMiner product, and there are a number of software as a service vendors that also offer it. SAML defines three roles. The principal is the user or device that requests a service from the service provider. The service provider, or SP, is typically a server-based application that the principal wishes to access. The service provider makes an authentication request of the identity provider and expects an authentication response shortly afterward. In the third role is the identity provider or IDP. It is a mostly stateless service that requests information from the principal, such as the username and password, and then connects to an LDAP or RADIUS service to provide authentication and authorization of the user via a SAML assertion that states that the principal is authorized to access the services provided by the service provider. And of course, the idea is that multiple web applications can rely on the same identity provider to authenticate and authorize its users such that it provides browser-based single sign-on. The typical setup for the use of SAML has a website with a SAML service provider plugin and an identity provider, which is typically connected to AD or some other LDAP server. The principal wants access to the website, but the user's request is intercepted by the service provider plugin. The plugin determines that the user does not have an appropriate login session or cookie to access the web server. Therefore, the service provider will request a SAML authentication from the identity provider. To do this, the service provider generates an authentication request consisting of an XML file that specifies the information it is requesting and optionally signs that request with its private key. It then does a HTTP 302 redirect through the user's browser to the identity provider. The identity provider then requests some set of credentials from the user. This can be simple username and password or can include some sort of multi-factor authentication. Alternatively, the credentials can be provided by integrated Windows authentication, which obviates the need for any user interaction with the identity provider. After the user provides the credentials to the identity provider, they are passed on to AD or some other access control entity to validate the credentials. AD, or whatever the access control entity is, validates the credentials and the user's authorized access to the web application. This can be done in a validity message or the groups that the user is a member of can be returned as well. The information from AD is parsed by the identity provider and two things are returned to the client. First, a cookie is returned such that if the client is redirected to the identity provider within some period of time, the identity provider will recognize that the user has already been authenticated and does not need to be re-authenticated. The second is the signed XML file containing the identity of the principal that was authenticated and one or more assertions. In the case of the software-defined perimeter, the assertions will be the groups in AD that the principal is a member of. The XML file is returned all the way back to the service provider plugin of the web server. The signed XML file must be validated by the service provider plugin. This involves the usual decrypting of the signature with the trusted public key of the identity provider and rehashing of the file such that the two hashes can be compared. Finally, the service provider plugin completes 
the now authorized request to the web server. It sends the requested web page to the client and also typically sends a cookie such that the client can continue to access the web server without additional interaction with SAML infrastructure. So there you have the typical sequence of events while using the SAML infrastructure. Now let's look at what's needed to set up the infrastructure, starting with the issues that the identity provider must resolve. As we saw previously, the service provider will send a SAML request to the identity provider. But how does the identity provider know that the service provider is authentic and not just phishing for private information? Similarly, after the user authentication has occurred and after the identity provider has constructed the SAML assertion, to what URL does the identity provider return the assertion to the service provider? And the service provider has some issues to resolve also. For example, to what URL does the service provider send the SAML request? And when the assertion is returned, how does the service provider know that it can trust the assertion? The solution to all of these problems is to create what are called SAML metadata files. These are XML files containing entity descriptors that answer those questions above. The way it works is that there is a metadata file for the service provider and one for the identity provider. Then they are exchanged out of band such that each maintains the XML metadata file that can answer those questions above. So that covers the basics of security assertion markup language, better known as SAML. In the next set of videos, we will take an in-depth look inside each of those XML files to get an even better understanding of SAML.